Greetings boys and girls. In today's video, we're going to talk about frequency tables, dot plots, and stem and leaf plots. These are all ways that we can present data to other people. So we might do a survey um, and we collect this data and then we want to show the results to others. We can use one of these tools. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is going to be the frequency table. Now, a frequency table is a table that uses numbers to record data about how often something happens. The frequency is the number of times that the data occurs. Now, in the examples I show you on the screen, you can see they used a tally chart, and then they showed how many times that thing occurred. So that was the frequency. All they did for the frequency was they just added up the tally marks and wrote the frequency. So you see they had two tally marks for two, then they wrote a two. Okay, they had four tally marks, and they wrote a four. So, uh, six, sorry, five tally marks, and they wrote a five, and so forth. So let's look at one. I did this on my computer screen, so I wasn't able to do the slash, so I just grouped all of the tally marks into groups of five. Okay? So we see that um, there was a survey about children's favorite superheroes. Let's see how many chose Batman. One, two, so that's five, ten. So a total of 14 chose Batman. I guess I should use a different color. Spider-Man, that was five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Superman, they only had seven. Wonder Woman had 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, so 26. Hulk, there were 5, 10, 13. Iron Man, 5, 10, 15, 20. And then Green Lantern had a whopping 5 votes. <laughs> so that's what a frequency table would look like. Okay, and I can look at this frequency table and I can see who had the most votes. Well, of course, Wonder Woman, she had the most, who had the least votes. Uh, Green Lantern. I can figure out how many more votes Wonder Woman had than Green Lantern. I would simply subtract 26 minus 5 and I'd get 21. So Wonder Woman had 21 more votes than Green Lantern. Okay, let's look at another way that we can present data. By the way, if you need to pause this video to add up those tally marks, go ahead and do so. The next way that uh, information can be presented is with a dot plot. A dot plot is a graph that shows the frequency of data along a number line. Okay, so the key that we want to have in uh, dot plot is we want to have a number line. So let's look at a couple of examples. In this dot plot that I've just made a little bit larger, you can see they have a number line going across the bottom. It goes from 0 to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the what they are presenting is number of brothers and sisters that someone may have. So we can see from looking at this dot plot that two of the respondents to the survey had no siblings. Three respondents to the survey had one sibling. And then one, two, three, four, five respondents to the survey had two siblings. Okay, three respondents had three siblings, and uh, two respondents had four siblings. Okay, so the actual number of siblings, those are the numbers that are written across the bottom of this particular um, graph. All right, let's look at another one. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller, and now I want to look at this one that is talking about the one in the middle. It's talking about the fuel economy of uh, for a sample of 2015 
model year vehicles. Now this is some real data that someone would use when they're looking at cars. So there was one car that only got 16 mpg or miles per gallon. Okay? And there was one car, was an outlier, that got 40 miles per gallon. But where do we notice that most of the cars fell? A lot of them were somewhere in between here. Now the way that I circled it, you kind of missed that number. So we can look at this dot plot to see where did the information, where did most of the respondents fall. Okay, so we see that this is where a lot of them fell. Now look at this. I have no dot above 28, and then there's a space in between 28 and 30, and there's a dot in that space. What do you think that means that it represents? Well, they didn't label it, but right in between is going to be a 29, okay? So even though it's not labeled, that would be a 29 right there. Then we'd ha So we'd have one car that had 29 miles per gallon, two cars that had 30 miles per gallon, and look where a lot of the cars were. This other unidentified number, which would be 31. Okay, so a lot of cars, one, two, three, four, five, six of those models actually had 31 miles per gallon, okay? So this is another way that information can be presented. And the last one I just want to bring a little attention to is this one. Now we have a number line again. You see it goes between 12 and 24. Notice we're not skipping numbers. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You don't skip numbers, but there are spaces in between these numbers. There's one, two, three little dash marks in between. Well, think about it. What is in between whole numbers? There are fractions or decimals. So, when I'm looking at these things in between, I have four sections in between. So that I can have, just starting right here, I have 20. Then next, I would have 20 and 1 fourth. Even though it's not labeled, I know that would be 20 and 1 fourth where that purple circle is. Okay? When I'm thinking about this point right here, I have 23. Then I'd have 23 and 1 fourth. 23 and a half. And then 23 and 3 fourths. So that's what that point would be. Okay? So sometimes we're going to have our dot plots to represent fractional amounts. Okay, so that's enough of an overview of the dot plots. Now let's look at an example. Okay, Scott is training to run a half marathon. He recorded the distances he ran in a table. Use the data in the table to make a dot plot. So the very first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to order the data from least to greatest. This helps me do my number line, okay? So I have a 4 and another 4. They gave me those 4s first. After that, I see a 5. I'm going to write that down. And there's another 5. Okay, any 6s? I don't see any, but I do see 1, 2, 3, 7s. 1, 2, 3. And then I see 1, 2, 3, 8s. One, two, three. Then I see one, two, three, four, five nines. One, two, three, four, five. So I want to write all of that down. Now that I have my data organized and ordered from least to greatest distance, I am now able to move on to step two. And in step two, to represent the data values, I place uh, the dots above where they would be on the number line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish labeling my number line. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The title of this is going to be Distance Ran. 
And I can put miles in parentheses because the four, the five, the six, each of these represent miles. Okay, and above each of the numbers, I'm putting that many dots. However many times I wrote that number, I'm going to put that many dots. So you see four was written twice, so there are two dots above four. Five was written twice, there's two dots above five. Zero is not written, so I won't put any, sorry, six is not written, so I won't put any dots above six. And then for seven, I'm going to do one, two, three. For eight, I have three dots also. One, two, three. Now I'm using a stylus. It's really hard to make these dots look perfect. But one thing I want to try and encourage you to do is try to keep the lines, like the horizontal lines of dots, try to keep those lined up. It makes it so much easier for you to read. Okay, and then for 9, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to have 5 dots for 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's pretty much what my dot plot is going to look like. It's just a way that I can represent this data in an easy-to-read uh, easy format. You can see that more frequently, Scott ran nine miles, which is pretty far. I'm really impressed with Scott. All right, if you still need some time to get that down, go ahead and press pause on our video. Otherwise, we are going to move on to the last way of presenting data that we're talking about today. And that last way... Oops, is called a stem and leaf plot, okay? And this shows a group of data arranged by place value. Now, I will tell you, this is the one that I was like, I have never heard of this. It seemed like the weirdest, you know, way to present data, but once I realized that it was focusing, it was using place value, it made it so much easier to understand. So one thing I want to direct your attention to is the key. <clears throat> the key shows us what they're really showing us inside this stem and leaf plot. So when it has two line five, that means 25. So they just broke up the tens and the ones place. Okay, most time I put my phone on silence before I start making the video. <laughs> anyway, so then um, look at how they present the data. So on the left side, I'm going to circle this, these are all the tens places. So I have zero tens, one tens, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens. And on the right side, I have the ones place, okay? So I'm going to erase some of the stuff I've circled really quickly, and I'm going to show you an amount. Let's use blue. So I'm circling this one and the zero. This means that one of the values is ten. Okay, then looking at the same one and the seven, this represents 17. Even though the one and the seven are separated, that's 17. So look, there were three things that were 17 in this data set. Okay, look at this row with the threes. I have 31, 31, 32. 36, 36, and 39. Okay, so it's just using place value. I'm going to erase these marks I have on here. So it might be a little confusing at first. That's why I'm just showing it to you in this video. And we're going to try and do one. And you know what? In a couple of weeks, we'll spend a little more time with this to really better understand it. Okay, so look at this. Henry kept track of the points of each of his words when he played a word game with his friends with his friend so he got 13 points 15 points 19 points 31 points 22 points 33 points 27 points and 22 points when i get ready to use this stem and leaf to show the data instead of just putting the scores like that we're going to group the data by the tens digits 
Now, what I would do first is put them in order, okay? Um, I think that, that would make it easier. So I'd have 13, 15, 19, so I got use those. And then the 20s, looks like I have two 22s. And then 27. And then I go to the 30s, I have 31 and 33. Now from here, I can group it by the tens place. 13, 15, 19. So then in the 20s, I have 22, 22, 27. And they're starting it with 30 like this. Ah, my 30 does not look good. Let's redo that 30 so it looks a little bit better. So we have 31 and 33. Okay, so you see how they broke it like that? They said the 10s, I have a 13, a 15, and a 19. Well, in step two, I'm ordering the digits from least to greatest and drawing a line. We pretty much have already done that, but what they want us to do is to write the stems. So I have, to represent 13, 15, and 19, I have a one line, three, five, nine. I'm just dropping the 10 right now because the 10 is right here. So when I go down to the 20s, I have my two right there. So I'm not going to rewrite like 22, 22, 27. I'm just going to put the ones digit. So they already gave me the two. I have another two and then a seven. I'm literally just taking the tens digit off. Okay, because that's written before. And then for the 30s, I have 31. They already wrote the 1. And then I'm just going to put the 3 to represent 33. Okay? Now, we're almost done. This is how we set it up. We're just writing each of the digits in order from least to greatest. And now we're going to move on to the, the final step. Okay, now we're on to the final step, and it's basically, you might be wondering, wait, how did we get from step three to step four? You're going to actually make this, and you see how there's like a T-chart here. You've labeled stem, leaves. You have the one, three, five, nine. I'm not separating these by commas, so then I'm putting my two for 20, two, two, seven. I'm writing my three for 30, one, and three. Notice I try to line up my numbers so it's easy to uh, look at. So it says in step four that we would include a title, like points scored in word game, our labels, stem, leaves, and our key, key, one slash three represents 13 points. So this is what the final product is going to look like. Okay, let me give you a moment to get that down. Now, I'm also going to tell you, this is one of those that your parents may tell you, nope, I have not really seen. Again, this was one that I had not seen until three years ago. You okay? Boys and girls, in today's videos, we just looked at different ways that you can present data. We did not go in depth today. This is something that we're going to spend a little more time with in the weeks to come. But I just wanted to touch on it, make sure that we had seen it, and just seen some common ones. So we have the frequency tables, dot plots, and stem and leaf plots. I hope you enjoyed, and until we meet again, take care. And get some rest so you're ready for tomorrow's common assessment.